Hey guys, what's up and welcome back to another video. So here we'll be going through a complete walkthrough of the iGCSE Edexcel Maths A Paper 1H. Okay, and this occurred in the May June 2018 series. And for you and for you guys who don't know, this is exclusively the higher tier for the new spec. Okay, so if you're not sure which is the new old spec, firstly the new spec for higher um, starts starts from one now, so it's not three H four H, it's one H and two H. Plus the coding is different; it's now four M A one instead of four M A zero, which is the old spec. Anyway, without further ado, let's go, yeah? So I'm going to go through every question um, to the best I can, and I've already put solutions down for some of them, especially the long ones, just to make sure that it's 100% correct. Okay, so if, if you see anything that looks a bit odd, I like hopefully it shouldn't be, just let me know. Anyway, um, as for formulas, you need to know the arithmetic series, and this is going to be quite important for probably a later question. Another formula I want you guys to add to your formula booklet is this, is this UN formula which is similar to the sum formula, except there isn't a 2. So it's a plus n minus 1d. This tells you the position of the nth term. So this is the nth term formula. Okay. And the rest is okay. You know, we've got trigonometry. You got, oh, does it, they don't give you nothing actually. They give you, they give you triangle properties, quadratic formula, all the important stuff here. Yeah? They don't give you error in circle stuff, but don't worry. We'll put that as we go. Anyway, without further ado, we've got 20 questions and let's, let's, Crack on. So, number one, the table shows information about the weights in kg of 40 parcels. Okay, so this tells you, for example, the parcel weighs between 0 and 1 kg, and there's 19 of them, and so on. Write down the modal class. Now, modal is literally the mode, meaning the most popular or the most common. And clearly, the most common is 19 parcels between 0 to 1. So, the modal class is 0 to 1. Okay, because there's 19 of them. So stuff like this is just straightforward. And now for part B, it says work out an estimate for the mean weight of the parcels. So the mean weight is straightforward. You literally need to find the total FX. So I'm going to write this column now. And FX is found by multiplying the frequency with the midpoint of the parcels. So let's go ahead and write the midpoints here. Yeah. So the midpoint between 0 to 1 must be 0 0.5. 1 and 2 is 1.5. And then so on. 2.5, 3.5 and 4.5. And now all you do is multiply against the frequency. So for example, in your calculator, write 0 0.5 times 19, and you should get 9.5. And then 1.5 times 12 should give us 18, and so on, yeah? So I've done, I've already done, I've already actually calculated um, the final result already, just to show you again. I got 1.4 kg, so we need to get to this answer, yeah? And then 3.5 times 2, so that's 7, and last one, 9. And now here we, of course, add them all up. So in your calculator, if you add all of these up carefully, you should get, so bear me guys. So 18, 12.5. So have a go while we're doing this, yeah? See if you get the same result. And if you do, you should get 56. Now, because we know there are total 40 parcels, this means that the mean weight should be 56 over 40. And if you put 56 over 40, and hopefully you should get, yep, 1.4. And that's it. So this means 1.4 kg, which makes sense because if you look at the way the parcels, you can see that most of the parcels lie between 0 and 2. So between, because 19, 12 are the vast majority of them. So it makes sense for the answer to be somewhere between 1 and 2, which 1.4 fits nicely. And yeah, that's perfectly it. So let's move on to number 2. Okay, this one's all, <laughs> this one's quite easy as well, but you just have to be careful. So let's have a look. So there are some people in the cinema. Now, three-fifths of the people in cinema are children. So this means, guys, that two-fifths must be adults, yeah? So write this down right now, okay, just to make that distinction clear. Now, for the children in cinema, specifically the children, for every girl to boys, there are two girls to every seven boys, okay? So if you were just to simplify this ratio for a second, we could say that for every one girl, there are 3.5 boys, okay? This, this will help. Usually for these type of questions, they help. So for every one boy is three point for every one girl is three point five boys. Okay, so just that's by half in the ratio, simplifying it. Now we know that there are one hundred and seventy girls in cinema. So if there are one hundred seventy girls, and we know that for every one girl there are three point five times many boys, we can say that there are three point five times one hundred seventy, which will give us a number of boys. So in your calculator, you're gonna write one seventy times three point five to work out the actual number of boys which means there are 595 boys. 
So, so far in total, that the number of children we have would be 170 plus 595, which would give us 765 children. Now, this is pretty good because this means that because we already did a lot of maths, we can say that 765 children represents three fifths of the people. Okay. Okay, so this helps a lot. Work out the number of adults in the cinema. Well, we know that we know that two fifths of the people are adults. So if we know three fifths of the people are children, to make your life easy, first find one fifth by dividing by three. So divide your answer by three to get two hundred fifty-five people, and then timesing it by two to get two fifths of the people, which are of course adults. So these are the adults, and this was the children. And then you should get 510. So 255 times 2 is 510. It makes sense. So this represents two fifths of people. This figure here represents three fifths, and we should get 510. Perfect. Yep. So if this if this question was good, let me know. And um, if you if you guys are struggling any bits, just uh, write in a comment below, and you know I'll try and help you through as soon as I can. Okay. Next one, number three. Oof. All right. Th these ones are easy. So simplify y to the power of 5 times y power 9. Well, if you're times, you just add the powers. So 5 plus 9 is 14. Next one, simplify 2m cubed all to the power of 4. This one, all this means that you stick the power of 4 to both these numbers. So it'll be 2 to the power of 4 and m3, and you just literally stick on like that. m3 three, three times 4. So 2 to the power of 4 in your calculator, because of course, it's a calculator test. It will give you 16. And then 3 times 4 is 12, so it's m to the 12. Seriously, make your life easy. Eh? Don't get too complicated these questions. They're usually question for it. Next one. Solve 5 times x plus 3 equals 3x minus 4. Now, for these ones, always expand the bracket. Yeah. So times 5 to the bracket, you get 5x plus 15, and then copy the rest. And now throw all the x terms on the left. So if you've got 5x and 3x, to throw 3x across, you just subtract it. So it'll be minus 3x, so you get 2x here. And then throw plus 15 across, you get minus 15. So minus 4 minus 15 is minus 19. And lastly, to separate the 2 from the x, just divide it by 2. So this means x equals minus 19 over 2. And that's exactly what I got earlier. Okay, and let's move on to d. Okay, so factorize this quadratic. Now, when you see something in this, like x squared plus an x term with a number, always think of this as two bracket problem, yeah? So get, get the two brackets ready. And because it's x squared, we know there's going to be x times x in the beginning. To easily, you know, factorize this, think of two numbers that multiply to make 24 and have a sum or difference of 2. So two numbers that multiply to make 4, let's just 24, let's think. Mm, so we've got 8 times uh, 3. But that doesn't have it that doesn't seem to have a difference of two we also have 12 and 2 anything better yeah six and four so six and four clearly has a difference of two so you put six here and four to get plus two it must be plus six minus four and that's it easy that's factorized and now hence solve that equation when you set it to zero so if you notice this quadratic is the same as the first one so just make that equal zero so i'm just going to do it here for the sake of it here so when you when you do this and this is just a quick way. If you go x plus 6 equals 0, then x must be negative 6. So flip the sign. If you go x minus 4 equals 0, then x can also be plus 4. But in exam, just write x equals 4. We don't need to write plus sign. That's it. Just literally flip the sign and make x equal. That's, all, that's literally all what you always do every single time. And let's go on to number 4. So, for this Venn diagram, I put a couple notes here, yeah? If you get this U sign, it means union. It means the combination of everything in the Venn. If you get this N sign, think of N for intersection. Okay, not N, so intersection, why not? This means stuff that, that are in common for both. For example, the intersection of B and C would be 5. But the union of B and C would be every single element inside it. That's literally all it is. Now, let's, let's go ahead and look at the question, yeah? So write down the numbers that are in the set A. So we just look at A, that, so literally the whole circle of A. So we have 1, 3, 2, 4, 12, and 6. So write down the numbers that are in set A. So we just, we just write the list. So I'll put in numerical order. So you've got 1, you've got 2, you've got 3, 4. Yeah, actually this is quite easy. 
you have um, 6 and 12. So, yep, cool. Write down the numbers that are in set B uniting of C. So B union C. So everything in B and everything in C. So clearly we have 1, 3, 9, 7, 11, 5, and 10. Yeah, this one I'm not going to do in order. I'm just going to just list it here. Yeah, so 1, 3, 11, 7, 9, 5, 10. Did I miss anything else? Yep. So 2, 4, 6, 7. 2, 4, 6, 7. So it should be 7 digits here. Okay, yeah, that goes there. Now, Brian writes down the statement that the, when A intersects with C, you get something known as the empty set. So what this means, if you look at the Venn for a second, you can firstly see that A does not intersect with C. And this is actually correct. This means that this, this is not intersecting. So we say, yes, it's true. Because A does not intersect with C. Very simple. Keep your answers very simple. Now, one of the numbers in the Venn diagram is picked at random. Find the probability that this number is in the set not C. So this little C prime, this literally means not C. So try and, try and focus on that little apostrophe here. Yeah? So this means every element that is not in the circle C. So it's 5 and 10 in C. That means every single thing is not in C. So literally, we just exclude these two. So we have how many numbers? So write on probability. So it's going to be, let's count. So we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So 10 out of, including these two, 12. So the probability that the number is not in C would be, of course, 10 out of 12. Or simplify 5 out of 6. Easy. Okay, number 5, yeah? Now, write, oh, okay, all right. You know, standard form is, this is a nice way to, to wrap this up. Write 8 times 10 to the power 4 as an ordinary number. Just smash this in your calculator and you should get 80,000. Another way to understand this, if you don't use a calculator, this power four, this 10 to the power 4 means it should be exactly 4 digits of the 8. And by digits, I mean if there, if there are no other decimals, just write 4 zeros. So 4 zeros, yeah? If, if it's a whole number. If it's something like 8.1 times 10 to the power 4, there should be 4 digits after the 8, including the 1. So be 8, 1, and then 3 more. As long as there are 4 numbers, yeah? Okay. Now, part B, work this out, give you some standard form. Ooh, this is this is made for the calculator. I did this before actually, and you would actually get the answer if you just type exactly what says in the calculator. So let me just double check it as well. So copy that, this out carefully. You don't actually need to put the brackets for this one, but as always, don't risk it and just put the bracket in. And if you do that, you should get, actually no, forget what I said, put the bracket in, yeah? Because if you don't put the bracket, it's going to think you're doing something different. So put the bracket in. Ooh, and I got 0 0.0005. And then when you, what this means, to convert the standard form, you have four digits b before the five. So this means um, 10 to the power negative four. So five times 10 to the negative four. That's how you calculate. You just count how many zeros before the, before the digit. And yeah, and just to double check this right, let me just ch check my working out. So 3.5 times 10 to the power 5 divided by 7 times 10 to the power 8. Brackets there, yes. Yep, it looks good. And this is the answer. So guys, if this video has been helpful so far, let me know. Please give me a like, share with your friends, and otherwise, um, stay tuned for more.